Hey, how you doing everybody? My name is Cherryboy and welcome back to Katakata. Let's get right back into it. Ayusa must have been tired. She's like a little kid, hmm, Lucia? On the other side, Lucia is muttering a, muttering a steady stream of words. I told you it'd be embarrassing, so don't do it, but no, you wouldn't listen to me enough. All the times you say something cool that has to be now, and you and I used to do whatever you want, and uh, I can't take this, I want to curl up and disappear. Lucia? A laugh escapes me as I gently stroke her hair. <laughs> a jolt runs through Lucia's body. Lucia. What? What, what do you want? Turn this way. What? Wait. <laughs> Where I can, were I to continue listening to her lovable complaints, I might just lose my mind. Therefore, I stop her from talking using a very practical method. Yeah, the day will break soon. This morning will probably be just a little livelier than usual. Yes, we shut her up with a kiss. That's how you do it. Alrighty then. Where does the day take us now? And so. Once upon a time, a great misfortune befell the human race in the form of the disaster. There were places that experienced crippling civil wars. There were cities where large-scale terrorism wrecked havoc. There were countries ravaged by the spread of terrible diseases, and there were regions which countries were swept up by the flames of war. Before anyone knew it, the human race had already lost over three-quarters of its total population, and the extended period of time spent in mortal peril had severely damaged its ability to reproduce. Realizing that its very existence as a species was at risk, the human race turned to other creatures for aid. Some gained the ears and tails of cats and successfully produced many offspring. Others gained the strength of dogs and their success, and their success along with it. And others greatly improved their immunity levels by sharing circulation through each other's bodies. Mm. However, even making use of these methods, the human race failed to stop its decline. Conflicts erupted between these humans and the original unchanged ones, following shortly thereafter by persecution. Oh no. The race's attempt to halt its decline merely reignited the very conflicts that caused it. Darn it! This is a time where, when hybrids known as the Others, those who are human yet not, exist in great numbers. This is a time of senescence for the human species. This is the Age of Dusk. On this day, during these times, a grand little story begins again. I see. <laughs> Delicious! Huh? Leon, are we not del delivering to the town hall today? Yeah, their entire staff is out on a picnic. Apparently, they had way too much fun making sandwiches and ended up with too many, so they didn't need a lunch delivery. That doesn't sound fun. Should we go on a picnic some- oh, that does sound fun. Should we go on a picnic picnic sometime too? Yeah, we can probably plan it for a day off, and then prepare. <laughs> Delicious. Hey, Aisa, hold on just a minute, young lady. Lucia, <laughs> you. what? Don't what me. How much cream stew have you had already? Are you trying to go apple shaped? Mm, the second making language is so difficult. What might apple shaped mean? It's in the vocabulary list I gave you. I know because I wrote it there myself. Ah, uh, I thought that would work. Plus, the way you eat is unacceptable. You can't gulp down your stew like it's a latte. But it tastes so good that way. Doesn't look like it to me. In any case, you're on the seventh bowl now. Put a cap on it already. Mm, Lucy is turning into my mother. Ah, Leon. Would you please say something too? Well, I mean, free food is pretty much the only benefit of her job. It's not like we're paying her a fortune. I think it's fine. It is not fine. If she keeps this up, she'll end up eating everything we have, including our spare inventory. Does that sound fine to you? Jeez, is she seriously eating that much? Well, yeah, she eats about twice as much as the two of us put together. Every meal. It won't take long to clear out the fridge at this rate. Huh? And this, and this would be where I make my escape. Very sneakily. Hey, I've got my eyes on you. <laughs> I've been caught. What? Leo, 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 go talk to mommy. <laughs> I am not your mommy. Okay, okay. Let's just say this is the last bowl. Good. <laughs> see, see, Daddy Leon said so, so it's okay, right? Knock it off with the mommy and daddy business. Jeez, this is absolutely the last one, okay? 
But man, she really does eat a lot. I guess I see where you're coming from. Leon's daddy, and I'm mommy. <laughs> Lucia? <laughs> um, nothing. Don't scare me like that. I wasn't really trying to. Last ball, here we go. And so, that happened. Yeah, now that you mention it, we do start running low on inventory pretty quickly. Right? Yeah, it's kind of scary, actually. Well, thanks to Aisa, we're also making more box lunches now, so it's not a problem we have to deal with immediately. For Aisa's sake, we should probably come up with some dishes that are both cheap and filling. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. We meet each other's gaze and find ourselves sharing a quick laugh. When we have talks like this, it really does feel like we're a family. Ow! Aisa, who's chopping vegetables behind us, death suddenly cries out. Aisa? What's wrong? Did you cut your finger? Oh, it's not my finger. My tooth hurts for some reason. Oh no, you've got a cavity. Are you brushing your teeth properly? You can't just use them for eating all the time. You have to take care of them too. Yes, I am. The top teeth and bottom teeth. I go back and forth <laughs> two and a half times for both. I wonder what's wrong then. I know. Oh, I know. Is it time for the two fairy to visit? Oh, you're treating me like a child! You go down stew after all. Those aren't related. Going down stew does not make me a child. Leon, come check my tooth for me. Huh? Me? I'm not a dentist, you know. That's fine. Check to make sure my tooth doesn't have a big hole in it. Well, I guess a gaping hole is something even I can diagnose. I feel like it would hurt way more if there was a big hole in there. Alright, open wide. Ah. Uh, okay. Alright, I see fangs. I put a finger into Ace's wide open mouth and check inside. It looks like she is indeed taking good care of her teeth. How is it? How does it look, Leon? Do you see any cavities? Nope, does it get much cleaner than this. And she eats so much too. Then again, I guess her teeth have to be strong enough to handle all that eating. I'm such a good girl! The right and left, top and bottom, everything looks okay. There are no cavities to be found. As for other things of interest, nothing else, really. Hmm? Well, then, well then, these are pretty remarkable. I say, you have pretty big canines. Right? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's why you can chomp through all that meat and stuff. I love meat! Yeah. Oh, I wonder if fixing those canines of yours will make you eat less. <laughs> You're terrible. I don't like people who say terrible things. Uh, one second, everybody. Let me get that. Yeah, CG. All right. Now, now, don't talk with your mouth open like that. Uh, okay. All right. In the end, we find no cavities in Aisa's teeth. We decide that if something hurts again, though, we'll take her to see a dentist. Two weeks have passed since Aisa came to live with us. Our peaceful days continue under a mantle of soothing tranquility. On the arid and windswept outskirts of the town, only here does the sound of laughter fills one ear from day to day. Ears from day to day, for three solitary souls, me, her, and her. Another calm, quiet day begins. Episode two: Overlap in the night sky. Great. Oh, that was all episode one. Dang. <laughs> Alrighty, where do we go now? Let's see. Alright, there we go. Leon, did you finish loading everything? Yeah, who's going to drive today? I'll drive first. You can drive on the way back. Gotcha. See you later then, Aisa. Okay, both of you take care. And so we go driving. Seriously, where in that body of hers do you think she hides all that food? She moves and talks a lot, so she probably burns it all off quickly. That still doesn't account for the sheer amount of stuff she crams into herself. Hmm... You know, you sure do talk a lot about Aisa. What? Lucia blushes and just juts her head out at me. I mean, sh she's so unguarded, don't you think? Just can't help but look after her. Yeah, you're right. Besides, you talk about her all the time, too. It's not just me. Yeah. Jeez. Presumably unhappy at being called out on that fact, Lucia pulls up, puffs out her cheeks and stares out the window. The weather outside is fine as always. Come to think of it, the weather was like this back when we first found Aisa, too. You know, I'm glad Aisa's here. 
Giggling, Lucia says this with a peaceful look on her face. Mm-hmm. The car continues to make a beeline for the town, leaving clouds of dust in its wake. <laughs> the sky seems much bluer than usual today. Ah, uh, look at that anime sky. As always, the deliveries conclude without any trouble. Yo, Leon! Yo, Leon! Here with Lucia today? Also, as always, Colin greets us after we finish our deliveries. Good afternoon. Hey, Colin. We haven't seen you in a while. Tell me about it. Been up to my neck in work. The thought of a beer over at your place is real appeal appealing right now. Since we haven't seen, seen her since the fiasco with Lucia, we bring her up to speed with recent events. Huh? So, sound like you're getting along pretty well with your new staff. Yes. Yes, we're doing fine. Thanks for asking. Interesting! I wonder what kind of girl she is. She's been so caught up in her work that she hasn't had a chance to meet Aisa yet. Come and meet her sometime. She's a bundle of fun. Yeah, that's what she sounded like so far. Things will probably calm down tomorrow, so I'll pop by. After saying that, Colin's smile takes on a more mischievous shape. So, how's progress, Leon? What? Oh, come on, don't tell me you haven't thought about sleeping together and whatnot. I know you have. I can see that desire in your eyes. Cullen jokes with us in a usual, fictitious matter, manner. We, however, do not respond as she may have expected. Um, about that. Um. <laughs> well, you see. Considering she just described what actually happened, both of us blush and avoid her gaze. Huh? <gasps> Hold on! Isn't this where Leon's supposed to give me his usual witty retort? Sorry for not going by the script, but, you know. Ah, okay, okay, I get it. Don't need to tell me the whole world about it. Well then, uh... Colin seems to be, have a bit, become strangely embarrassed and goes silent for a while. Uh, Leon. Yes? Should I go pick up some baby supplies for you? No, thanks. Please don't. Lucy looks like she wants to curl up and disappear. I also find the notion something somewhat appealing. I have to say, this is actually really embarrassing. And we drive back! <laughs> that was awful! It sure didn't help that Cullen talked like she was embarrassed too. Honestly, it would have been better if she just joked about it like she usually does. On second thought, at least part of her, pro part of her probably meant what she said. I wonder what would happen if he really did have one. Wait, what? Why don't you start on me too? I said if, if we did, then... The embarrassment is so thick you can cut it with a knife. We're not going to make it back in one piece like this. I roll down the window, window allowing the wind to blow in and clo cool our flushed cheeks. Oh, by the way, what did Cullen talk to you about before we left? Huh? Oh, that. Well... And so, flashback! I'm heading back to the car first, then. Sure. Lucien walks off toward the car parked a little ways in the distance. Sorry, I didn't mean to make it seem like she was in the way. Don't worry about it. Is this still about that same issue? Yeah. Did you see any no noteworthy customers in the past week? Ever since I became the owner of the restaurant, Cullen has come to me with this question from time to time. She wants to know if there are any customers who keep probing about personal matters, or whose eyes are a bit too restless to be simply looking for food. I'm instructed to report to her if I see anything unusual. Last week was business as usual. Nothing to report, ma'am. Got it. That's the best we can hope for. Keep me posted about anything odd. Understood. According to Cullen, the police are having problems with being short-staffed. Although the population has dropped, there are still as many issues as there are people alive. There are not nearly enough officers to investigate each and every case, so they rely on tips from informants like me. Alright. Nothing much, just the usual. How's the store? Where, where are we delivering to? Stuff like that. Hmm, if you say so. What did you think it was about? I was just worried if it was about the ghost from before. That was some scary stuff. Now that she mentions it, I do recall some talk about that. If I get scared again, I'm going to make you come for me. Got it? Aisa's never going to let you hear the end of that. She'll be laughing at you for ages. <laughs> Only when we're alone, okay? I'll still be the big sister when all three of us are together. Damn, she's adorable. <laughs> yeah! Alright, well, that's all the time I have for this and everybody, but thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like below. If there's any other games you'd like me to play, please comment down below as well. If you like this and would like to see more, please that subscribe button and that notification bell, as that would be epically appreciated of you. And as always, my name is Cherryboy, and I will see you in the next video.
拜。See ya.